Good morning. Contend, O Lord, with my contenders. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and your shield. Arise in my defense, Lord, my mighty help. Beginning the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us one day to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that, through, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I put my spirit, he shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth, and the coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you. I set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. My brothers and sisters, may our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine Aramaic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas Isca the Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one whom would betray him, said, Why was this oil not sold for 300 days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal from the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this day for my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. 
The large, large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus, too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. And so today, as we begin this Holy Week, which really began yesterday, but the first day of the week, the last line of the gospel says, and many people were believing in Jesus because of him, Lazarus, because he had raised him from the dead. And so with us in our own lives and our following of Jesus, there should be that part of us that uh, we have been raised with Christ when we got baptized, huh? That's the whole point of it. So we live this risen life that our life should always be pointing to Jesus and people be- begin to believe in Jesus because of us, huh? That's got to be what disciples are. So the question always is for us, do people believe in Jesus because of me? And if the answer is no, well, then that means I got to get out of the way, especially as we enter this holiest of weeks. And the first reading tells us what that kind of looks like. It means we're called to be the light in the darkness. And I've said a thousand times before, no matter how intense the darkness is, no matter how deep the darkness is, it can never conquer the light. So we have a choice. We can be one of those pagans who curse the darkness every day and complain about the darkness and the darkness is out there. What are we going to do? Things are bad. Things are going to get worse. What's happening to the world? And become part of the darkness or we can bring the light to the darkness and dispel the darkness and conquer the darkness. This is what God is calling us to do as we enter into this holy week. That we become the light because Christ lives inside of us. And if we bring light to the darkness, then people will come to believe in Jesus because of us. If we just curse the darkness, they'll turn away from Jesus because of us. May each of you know his love today and forever. Amen. Let's stand and pray. We pray, as always, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for all bishops, all priests, all religious women and men, that they would bring the light to the darkness and and transform the darkness into light. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all world leaders. They would work for peace and for justice. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the end of the curse of abortion and every abortion clinical close. And we pray God's mercy on anyone who's had an abortion. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick that God in his mercy would heal them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died. Remember all the poor souls in purgatory. Remember all the priests and religious on this, their anniversary of their death, especially Father Stephen Anderson on this, his anniversary. And we remember Margaret Rezagowski, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they would all know God's life and love now forever in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And as always, we'll offer up this Mass also for you and for your intentions. So in the silence of your hearts, tell Jesus what you need and we'll offer up this Mass also for you and those intentions. We pray to the Lord. Father, give us the grace to get out of the way and to bring the light, to challenge the darkness, to transform the darkness. For that light is your Son, Jesus Christ. We beg you these things, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. (laughs) 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. The God who is our almighty Father. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here. And may we, what we, you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us fruit in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant to pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, O Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer each other his peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home unable to receive our Lord physically this morning, I'll receive Jesus physically in your name. But as always, I ask you to make an act of faith and an act of spiritual communion. Begin by just saying, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are God. And I believe that you became a man, that you died on the cross to take away our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Jesus, I believe that you're truly present in the most blessed sacrament. And since I cannot receive you now physically, I beg you to come into my heart spiritually. Come into my heart. Take control of my life. Be my Lord and God and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me your disciple. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ, and I surrender my life to you forever as you have surrendered your life for me. Let's close your eyes and ask the Lord to embrace you. Feel Jesus put his arms around you. Put your head on his chest. Listen to his heartbeat. Every time his heart beats, he says, I love you. Let Jesus now love you. May the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen.
Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear toward me on the day when I call. Speedily answer me. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray with the ever watchful love. Look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation, which by your mercy we have been received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for the blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities, not only with bodily observance, but above all with purity of mind. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May Almighty God bless, keep, and protect you. He who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Have a blessed day.